And I am live. Just wait for people to join. We have Barry in the house. Hello. How are you doing, mate? Is the sound okay? Could you give me a thumbs up if you can hear me clearly? Hello, Nige. So we have five people in the room already. We have my lovely Mickey taking wife in the house too. And I sorted it eventually. Yes, this so this is the first time I've I've done it on my laptop. This is a very, very old laptop with a webcam built in. And it's taken me a little while to try and get this sorted out over the last day. And finally got it in, sorted just in time for the stream. And I was worried that the camera wouldn't be okay or the sound, but actually looks okay. How is everybody? John in the house. So we have Michael in the house, regular. Five people so far. Everyone having a good day? So Barry said hello to Nigel, John, Michael and Mrs. Predictive. So we, um, you've seen the title of the video, of the live, and the, the question obviously, are negative reviews okay? We have Matt in the house and it's sorted. Yeah, Matt, thanks for your message, mate. Appreciate it. Everything looks good. And I can actually comment and the comments won't end. We're doing it through officially through YouTube for the first time. Excuse my dogs making noises in the background. One moment, actually, one moment. I'm back. Sorry, I just thought I'd put them out in the uh, conservatory stroke garden, shut the patio doors so you don't hear my dogs going nuts at each other. We have Marcus in the house. Who else do we have here? We have Luke is Poe. Luke, loving your content, mate. I've just watched your latest video yesterday, I believe, where you're um, mentioning Barry getting in around. Barry does get around. He's a bit of a tarp. We have Heather in the house. Hi, Heather. We also have Nick from Talk and Review. Hey all, Tony, hope you have the roast. Right, so firstly, where's Tony, where's my golden spanner? <laughs> I uh, I don't know how to release the spanners and stuff yet, so we'll uh, we'll have to work that out later. So what I thought I'd start with is what I've got in in the last week or so. Some new fragrances in the house. Thanks to a couple of people in this room already. And I thought I'd just go over what I've got and then we'll start the conversation about the topic in the topic on the live stream, which is our negative reviews. OK. We have Daniel in the house. Hi, Dan. Daniel, welcome. Right, so what I, what have I got in this last 10 days or so? Firstly, a few of you may recognise this. Sorry about the webcam quality. But that is from... Oh. That is from Pocket Sense, and we have the sale. The sale? for sale, 1722. Now this is an interpretation of Leighton by Parfums de Mali. 
And this, I'm not going to go into too much detail because I'd like to review all of this, but just a quick cap of what I've got in. So that's my first one, the sale. And that was actually on my list of things and wants to get. And one of, one of them scrubbed off. Pocket sense, never heard of them. Tell us more. <laughs> yeah, Nick, Nick, it is a good one, mate. Who is this Matt anyway? Is, is he is he all right? I hear he's a bit of a uh, nice guy. Right. On to what else? Now, there is one person in this room. I'll give the name out at the end. And he will recognise the package and what I got in. So, firstly... There are a load of samples there. And every one of those samples are from Parfums de Mali. So we have Galloway. We have Nissian. We have Leighton Exclusive. We have Carlisle. We have Callan, we have Habdan, we have Dali, and we have Sedley. Now I've reviewed Dali already, and that is a cracking fragrance. So I'm looking forward to doing some reviews on those. Oh dear, what are you up to? What is she up to? Is she causing trouble? We've all seen your package, Tony. Have you been emailing people? <laughs> <laughs> so, dear, oh dear. Sedley is lovely, Michael, really good. Right, the next ones I've got in, and these have really surprised me actually. So, right, I'm gonna give his name out now. Marcus from PDM underscore UK, who is in the room sent me this little package and these I am really surprised about. So next we have Tag For Him by Amath or Amath. And that is a clone of Blur de Chanel. And I've worn this I must have had these a week or so, and I've worn this two times already, and I haven't put my scent of the day on today, and I, I want to go back to it again. It's just such an easy, dumb reach. Really, really good interpretation of Blur de Chanel, that. Very fresh. And next, we got in a very similar bottle, and that is Tag Him Prestige Edition. And this is a clone of... This is a clone of One Million. And again, very, very good. Now I've officially given this to my son, my youngest son, Scott, who loves One Million and he will use this as well as his own bottle. One thing, strange thing about it, the lids, look, they're magnetic. So you can't hold it by the lid, but they are slightly magnetic. What else do we have? What else have we got in? We have got in. I'm not looking at the comments yet because my wife's laughing. So she's obviously up to no good. Right. We have. And this again was from Marcus. So this is the last bit I got in from Marcus. Now you can't see the writing on that. But that is Perfume Pa's interpretation of Neroli Portofino. And you can see he's used a bit. And it's this is very, very citrusy going to be lovely in the summer. So I'm looking forward to wearing that. And that is their interpretation of Neroli Portofino. We have Scott in the house. Hello, Scott. How you doing? Right. Lastly. Right. What is she up to in this room? Hey, Barry, should we get Tony to play Little Mix on these bang teams? <laughs> Right, let me tell you a little story. I don't mind this going live. My wife is convinced that I'm trolling Peter Carter. I'm not trolling him. I 
he's got this metal instrument that he plays and I've nicknamed it the bang ting. And I think it's fascinating, really do. And in fact, I want Peter to invite me on one of his lives to sing a little song while he's playing his bang ting because I think I'd do a good job, seriously do a good job. Now, Peter is an extremely talented musician. We're seeing that. But I ask him to play things like Little Mix and stuff. I'm not sure how that goes down well in the room, but I'm joking about. I'm not trolling him. I don't expect him to actually play Little Mix on his bang ting or his guitar. But it would be entertaining if he did. And I would join in. Right. Anyway, she's had a laugh now. On to what else I've got in. We have it, a full bottle, a new bottle of my favourite. So, Issy Miyake, everybody that knows me knows that this is my overall favourite fragrance. It's nothing complicated, but loads of scent memories involved. I won't tell you what they all are, because you've all heard it all before, and it's boring. But... I had to replace my old battered bottle with a new bottle. Now, this was a heads up from Matt at Pocket Sense. There is a great eBay account that is selling fragrances at really good prices. And if you bought two bottles, you got 20% off plus another 5%. So I picked up another fragrance. Now, this was, wasn't on my radar at all. So I said this year I'd only buy fragrances that were on my list. And I have failed miserably because I picked up D&G The One Grey. And this is the 50ml, lovely bottle on presentation, I must say. Really heavy lid like they are on the one bottles. Now this is, I won't again go into too much detail because I'd like to review it. I've not seen many reviews out there and the reviews I have seen, it, they're a bit underwhelming on it. Now my initial take is that it's a very clean, fresh, easy fragrance to wear and it is slightly different to other stuff that I've tried from D&G, but it isn't exciting. That's probably the best way to put it. It's not exciting, but it's not a bad fragrance. It's not something I would encourage you all to rush out and buy, especially you frag heads, because it is quite uncomplicated, but it's quite refreshing and it's going to be a lovely summer scent. So I picked up. So they are my recent acquisitions that I will be reviewing shortly. I'm looking forward to doing that. Right, let's go back to the room. What have we got going on? Right, so John says he doesn't want to be demonetized. Right, so if he plays Little Mix, he'll be demonetized. I didn't know that. Um, I'll stop asking him to play Little Mix then. Oh, well. That's all our loss, I think. Right. Kimski, hello, people. We have Kimski in the house. Kimski, me old Geordie Mucker. Right, who else we got? So we now have 15 people in the room, people. So I think it's about time we get onto the subject of are negative reviews okay? Now, I will start with my take on it. Some may or some may not agree with it, but I do think negative reviews are okay. But I'm not necessarily comfortable doing them myself for a number of reasons. Number one, my good friend in the house here sends me a fragrance. I may have bought it, I may not have done. I then really hate that fragrance and go on 
to my channel and absolutely slate and really bum the fragrance in terms of I hate it, it's crap, don't buy it, all the negative things that go with a negative review. Now, what is dangerous? There's a couple of things that don't quite sit right. It's not just my friendship with Matt. I would think this way about any company that I would either deal with or buy from. If I do that, I've put that out there for the world to see for everybody. They, it then becomes very difficult for me to take that back, number one. Number two, my opinion is my opinion. And I don't think that I am educated enough yet with this fragrance game to make a statement that is out there for everybody to see. Yes, it's my opinion, but a lot of people may think I'm wrong. So that's one of the things I'm worried about. I might hate it. The next person might love it. All of our tastes are individual. So I can say quite clearly to people that this isn't to my taste and that I personally don't like it. But this is some of the things and the positives that I could take from it. That is my own personal take. I would quite happily give that feedback honestly and openly behind closed doors. So someone asked me a question and said, what did you actually think of the fragrance? I'm not going to lie on my channel. That is one thing I'll make very clear to people. I will not lie on my channel. It's not about that. I just don't think it's fair and morally right for me personally, it doesn't sit right with me to release that kind of content to my channel. There are lots of other reviewers that take the same take as me. And there are going to be lots of other reviewers that don't agree with that at all. And they think that I may be hiding something or not telling my viewers the truth. I will always tell you the truth. But that doesn't necessarily mean that to go on and purposely slam or put a negative review out there on something is the right thing. That's my take on it. You may or may not agree with that, but I just wanted to get that out there for people. I think there are a lot of people that will be hankering after free stuff and the company says, I'll only give you that free bottle if you put a positive review out there. I will get this out in the open immediately. That is wrong and categorically wrong. The company should not be asking the reviewer and putting their spin on what they should say. That is not fair. And I wouldn't do that to, even with my closest people that I've dealt with. And I will tell you who they are. That is Matt at Pocket Sense and the tour from Rosa Salas. I personally, if Matt came to me and said, I want you to review this and I want you to do it positively or don't do it, that is not fair at all. But I think Matt knows me well enough now to actually just feed it back to him and say, look, Matt, I'm not happy to review this, mate. This is what I think of it. I personally wouldn't buy it. And if someone else came to me and said, hey, Tony, I heard you got this from Matt. Is it any good? I'm quite happy to say what my thoughts are about it behind closed door. Why would I then pick that fragrance up and slam Matt and say, why the hell has he released this? Sorry to waffle on about this, but I feel quite passionately about it. That is my take on, and I've got that out there for the world to say. I've just noticed Chris in the room. Thank you for joining me, Chris. He takes a very similar stance, and I've not copied that stance. I think personally I'm a good guy, and I want to be known to companies and to my subscribers that I'm a nice person to talk to and deal with. Now, behind closed doors, people might not agree with that. My wife doesn't. I am joking there. She does. I hope so anyway. But I don't necessarily think that other people doing it are wrong either because that is – everybody's got their own lane, and I'm happy for them to stay in that lane and do what they want to do. But then to come on to my channel and tell me that I'm wrong, who's to say that you're not wrong? 
There is two sides to this story. I want to go down the route that I'm happy with, and that is I will only review the stuff that I like. Positive reviews. I It's not natural for me to be horrible to a company or about the individual fragrance. And it's not just about being horrible, like I said. It's about that being damaging to my reputation because if I put that out there that this is rubbish, let's say someone that's much more educated than me on this picks that same fragrance up and loves it. Who's right and who's wrong? And I will look the mug if people agree with the person they think is right. So I'm happy to say I don't like something. I'm happy to say this is what could be done better about it. I'm happy to give the positive outlook on it. I'm not happy to slam a review. Right, we're going to go to some of the comments. That is my two cents worth. Sorry, Nigel, to steal your expression. Right, let's read what some people have put. So we'll start up here. All right, we'll start with... Mm -mm -mm -mm. Right, nice one, Ben. Here we go, here we go. Thanks for the tip. I got two samples of ATH frags and don't like them. I'd rather not do a review on them. And that's fair enough, Barry. That is fair enough. Heather, that's professional on your part, Barry. Matt, I've always been fine with balanced reviews. I like this and that and the next thing about frames, but this, etc., doesn't work for me. That's fine. I, that's, that's, that's my point, Matt, isn't it? And I think that's okay to do that. I like most things in fairness. I can see the good in things even when I'm not overly keen. The sense of negative reviews are essential. They have to be done in a tasteful and respectful way. Okay, you may not slate a friend's product in YouTube, it makes sense. Aha, oh, Cuba said Versace dream of smells like a bin bag left on the street, but I adore it. I guess fragrances, you never know. Right, what else have we got? Some people slam things to get attention. Yeah, I, I think some people do. Agree with that 100%. I think that's a fair way to do it too. Take an objective view. Yes, we all like, we all dislike something, but that's extremely personal. I don't mind balance. It's when something is trashed. I'm not fair. Yep. Some people take criticism of fragrance they like quite personally. People can be easily upset, which isn't good for either party. Chris has said, I agree, mate. If I don't like something, it may prevent someone from buying it, even if they may like it. I have the same mindset as you. I see my channel as recommendations. And that is a good way to put it. One man's trash is another man's gold and all that jazz. Yeah, exactly. We have Fab in the house. Hi, hi, Maya. How you doing? There's a place for negative reviews, but generally not on my channel. So speaking of trash, my neighbours only just their bins now. <laughs> I don't have issues with that. I did for the new fragrance release 2020. Problem behind that is negative reviews being dislike and your review is not visible anymore on YouTube search. I tried to see the positive. This is from Luke. I might mention whether it's worth the money or not, but that's all subjective as well. It is 100%. It's subjective. One man's food is another man's poison. Yeah, good way of putting it. John, I will catch up with these boys and I'll start talking again, boys and girls. I think it's like saying, Tony, I don't like you, your shiz, but surely the next match will be needed. <laughs> you can say that if you want, John, it's fine. I've got thick skin. I review my collection, so there's a damn good chance it's going to be positive. Yeah, that's exactly right as well, isn't it, Nigel? If you've taken the time to review what you've bought, then you're only going to be reviewing positive things anyway about your fragrances because you've gone out and bought them. Right, my missus is laughing here, so she's probably up to no good. Whenever Aaron has a negative YouTube review, it loses him thousands. I just can't bring that loss to a small company. Yeah. There we go. What else have we got? And some people do negative reviews, have a gift they can do it, tongue-in-cheek, humour and laugh and not just being rude. Yeah, I think there's a way of doing it if you want to do it. Uh, we have Chad in the house, a chanceman's journey. So um, if you've not followed Chad's channel, go and give him a watch. Chad is very, very honest and uh, has a way of putting things, so we say, on his channel. Really watchable. Welcome, Chad. Thanks for joining. 
Well, I've heard Parfums de Mali pay reviewers. Hmm. Jeremy in their store just suddenly put Calan as number one. It was just re released. Hi, Chad. Chad, our favourite Canadian chav. <laughs> is he a chav? Is, he? is, he, is that self-proclaimed that he's a chav? Dear, oh dear. So, yeah, that was my, my take on that. Um, I, I will stop banging on about it, but there will be comments in this video probably at the end saying that I won't do things honestly and do them in a truthful way. But I, that doesn't mean because of the way I do things that I won't be truthful at all. So there we go. That's my take. I'll end that there. It's not the end of the string. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk about what we're we going to talk about. We're going to do some questions. Let's do some questions. So I want you guys to ask me some questions, whether they're fragrance related or not. And I will answer them. Let's have some fun. Get some fun questions in there. Let's lighten the mood. Didn't our mummy tell us if you've nothing nice to say, not say nothing at all? <laughs> Chad, trust you, right? <laughs> So Chad's first question is, how sexy do you think you are? So how how are we rating this, Chad? Are we rating it on a scale of one to ten or one to a hundred? What how sexy do we think I am? That is an hilarious question. And how can I answer that in a uh, way that's not Big headed. I don't think I'm particularly sexy. I need Chris's body to think more of myself, I think. And I have neglected myself a little bit in lockdown. I need my hair cut. I've had my eyebrows trimmed, as you can see. They're looking on point. I've trimmed your hair the other day. Uh, Becca straightened my hair the other day. And my beard could do with a trim. But how sexy do I think I am? It's the accent, mate. <laughs> now, I am from the southeast of London and I've moved to Cambridge. So I'd like to say that I've got a council estate accent with a mix of a bit of Cambridge in there as well. My friends say I've lost my all right, mate, accent and I've become a little bit better spoken since I've been up here for the last 19 years now. But hey, let's see what else. I see that Matt from Georgia Gent has his haircut and promoted the products and hairdressers. Well, we can't do that here at the moment, can we? Need my haircut desperately. Fragmentals put a little... Right, what else have we put? What is she up to? Uh, Tony asked me to straighten his hair the other day. I didn't ask you to straighten my hair at all. <laughs> I didn't ask her to straighten my hair. She said, let me straighten your hair. She had the straighteners in her hand within seconds. Come on, let me straighten your hair. That is what happened. At least you've got hair. <laughs> Did you get a comb, Tony? I haven't got the comb yet, Heather. No, I'm waiting for that eagerly. So this comb, if you haven't heard, has got razor blades in. The idea is you take it through your hair and it takes a little bit off. Now, I'll probably leave a massive, great big ball patch and I will not be trusting Bex with it because she, I don't trust what she would do with it. Right, what else have we got? Would you rather be buried alive or burned at the stake? Ask him for a friend. Luke, who are you trying to get rid of? Ah, oh, dear, oh dear. That is a question. I think burned alive rather than buried alive because it's over with quicker. I wouldn't want that slow thing. Anyway, that's too deep and dark for me. Um, 
all right, everyone, I'm out. Need to go for my morning walk. The troll is leaving the building. <laughs> Have a great day and stay safe. Thanks for joining us, Chad. Even if it only was briefly, I understand, mate. It's fine. Don't worry about it. I won't take it personally at all. Go and enjoy your walk, mate. Thanks for joining. Right, what else have we got there? He must eat his crusts. What, to have my hair? He eats far too many cakes for Chrissy's body. Dear, oh dear. <laughs> what are you doing to me? What are you doing? I do eat far too many cakes. You know what doesn't help? I've been doing this... Yes, and, and yeah, bear with me one second, sorry. And yes, negative reviews are okay, very much needed. There we go. The channel answered it for us. Right, back to the other thing, eating too many cakes. Now, I'm not in back, I'm not going to get my body out for you right now. <laughs> I'm not in terrible, terrible shape, but I'm on that edge where I'm uncomfortable, where I need to get back to... My boxing, I need to get back to a bit of fitness. I'm on that tipping balance and the tipping, the seesaw, if I sit on it, is starting to go that way. And that's not a good thing. So I will be needing to get my bum into gear very, very quickly. Otherwise, it's just going to go the wrong way. I am working in Tesco's overnight. Sorry to other people that already know this. And you never guess what aisle they've put me on to stack the shelves. Bread and cakes. Now, to someone that loves cake, that is murder. They've put me on the bread and cakes aisle. I have breaks. I have a break. I'm able to go and buy stuff on my break. What do you think I'm going to do? Not good. Set Barry's. He had to put his T-shirt on to go on to Killer's live chat. I did indeed. I was sat in bed. I was actually ready for sleep. And I was watching it just before I went to sleep and got invited on. I thought, you know what? Let's get on there. Let's get on there, Let's get on there and do it. So I thought, well, rather than make his live viewers suffer with my hairy chest, I uh, decided to put a T-shirt on. John, did you know I got onto Killer's live chat the other night? I'm a star now, do you know? Does he sneak any home bet? Uh, occasionally. They're mainly sat in hiding in my car like a shameful secret eater. And then when she does get in the car, she finds the wrappers or finds the uh, empty box, which then catches me up to forget to get rid of it. There we go. Do you eat the ones that accidentally fall on the floor? <laughs> no, is the answer, John. I don't do that. You came across really well, Tony. Thanks, Barry. It's always worrying that how you come across on a bigger channel and staying sl slightly entertaining, but coming across as yourself. Don't have the stamina for eight killers, eight hour sessions. Oh God, here we go. Do you know what he does, Barry? He moans that the kids, etc., leave his car dirty. Well, Barry, his car is full of cake stuff, secret eater. Oh, not so secret anymore. I didn't say it was entertaining, mate. <laughs> He said, I came across very well, not entertained. That's very true. Thanks for pointing that out, Barry. Right, have we got any more questions? Do I, we seem to have a few people that have gone quiet. Has Matt disappeared on us? Michael, do you like blue sun or Italian zest? Not tried either, Michael. Sorry. Um, what were the two options? Uh, DG Light Blue Sun mm -hmm. or Italian Zest? Hmm, I don't know, is the answer. I'm sorry, Michael. I would, I'm going to have a guess if I had to pick those two blindly, I would go for Italian Zest. Aha, uh -huh. is he wearing your lipstick whilst he's stuffing his. Oh. 
I was just, the match just said exactly what was in my mind just then. John, what on earth goes on in that mind of yours? Matt, let's not even start to comprehend what goes on in John's mind. John was quite happily, John would quite happily take a lube and dildo into the woods <laughs> to get some pictures. So that is what goes on in John's mind. And he goes out to hunt toilet roll. Now, John, I love you to bits. I find it hilarious. I really do. It is very entertaining. But I'm just like, oh, John, what are you doing? <laughs> I do love you, mate. Right, here we go. I didn't recognise him without his filter. <laughs> that I've, 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 you know what? I've gone on, deleted that picture now. Me and the toilet roll. That gone, <laughs> gone forever. Favourite notes and most challenging notes for you? That's a good question, Helen. Heather, Helen. Hi, Helen. <laughs> um, that's a great question. Favourite notes? We did um, favourite free fragrances for free notes recently. It's no surprise that I love a lipsticky iris. Love, love, love it. I, what else do I love in fragrances? I like anything quite zesty at the moment. Now the better weather's come in. So anything bergamot, orange. So I love anything citrusy. Loving that at the moment. And what else do I love at the moment? I would say um, anything with amber uh, or ambergris, I tend to sort of gravitate. My collection, looking at my collection, is um, I have a lot of winter style fragrances in there at the moment. So I need to get some more freshies in, I feel. Right, what else is being said here? Barry asked me a question. Barry asked a question. What was the question? Like, how do you feel about John stealing your idea from last week? <laughs> she didn't say anything to me, John. Uh, I put Barry, I don't mind. I like to be the creator and let people run with it, like fragrance tinder. Yeah, that worked. That worked massively. Michael's put, trying to get Mugler Pure Tonka in. It's hard to get pancake smell yummy. Right, we have Matt's put brings back memories of eating cakes in the car, lipsticky Irish scent memories. <laughs> Mugula Pur Tonka is available on Scent Split. Matt, I have a varied collection. You, Barry, you have the biggest collection. You don't have a varied collection. You could start your own store. Not that I'm jealous at all, maybe just a touch. Because I would love your budget. <laughs> your budget is insane. I love it and I'm jealous. I love watching your content though. I am with you. I love your openings and your first impressions and your unboxings because I love those videos because I'm like, I, I'm there with you. And I think it's okay to get jealous as long as it's not in a vindictive or horrible way. So let's say, I say, I'm jealous of you, Barry, for all the fragrances you've got. Now, if I did that in a way that I wasn't happy for you, that would be wrong. Let's get that right. I am over the moon for you and I'm with you massively. Um, and I love it when you open your stuff and you get excited. I love it when anyone does that. And yes, I may be just and think, oh, I really want that. But not in a way where I, I, I feel bad, the way I think, oh, God, why has he got it and why have I not? i never, ever do that. But Barry, you have an insane collection and that is building massively. You could start your own boots, mate. You really could. The crystal meth note is really gaining traction. <laughs> yeah, I hear it's quite Moorish. <laughs> dear, oh dear. Saving loads on petrol. Yeah, that's a great point. Really good point. Oh, yes, there's also a toothless accord. Barry had a lovely video this morning. Yes, he did. Um, I really, I haven't, I don't think I've quite finished it, Barry. Sorry, I've watched some of it and your first impressions on them. And I'm really happy for you. That Baronda, I would just call it Baronda, um, is, it sounds, 
up your street, it doesn't sound so much up my street, I wouldn't spend that, all that money without trying at least a interpretation of it first. I'm not sure it's going to be quite to my taste, a bit challenging for me maybe. Okay, so you send you any decals? Or whatever you like, Tony. Barry, you're a star. And likewise, mate, if I ever have anything you want to try, let me know and I'll quite happily send it out to you. No problem. Are you going to give me a plug back? Right, <laughs> Becca's just outright. I've got 17 people on here. Oh, 17 might not fully right. really subscribe to me. If all 17 people in the room could make sure they're following my wife's Instagram handle, which is my handle plus snaps, it has a very similar logo. Has a very similar logo. So go and give her a follow if you haven't already. Predicted snaps. Go follow. I think I say some nice things about you, but like I do on your chat. You don't say nice things about me on my chat at all. You take the mick out of me. Um, right, I agree. Those reviews are the best when guys can't wipe their smile off faces. It's brilliant, isn't it, Matt? You're there with them. You feel like yeah. you're in there. Uh, Chris is still in the house. He's put Baronda is probably the best boozy whiskey scent. Not challenging at all. So, Barry, there you go, mate. If you don't mind getting rid of the touch of your Baronda, then even if it's just a meal or a couple of meal, I would like to try that and I will report back. Let's do that. Thank you very much. Barry Onda. <laughs> Brilliant. That is so good. Did you say that first, Matt? So we're going to call it Barry Onda from now on. Can you send me some Barry Onda, please, Barry? Thank no, I think you. It was, John Snow. was it John? Was it? That's hilarious. John from the North. Sorry, John Snow from the North. John Snow knows nothing. Anyone that watches the show will know what I mean. I want that purple perfume. Heather, it, if it wasn't so difficult to get it to the States, I'd quite happily in an instant send some to you. We'll see if I can get it priced up as to how much it would cost to get one out to you. But uh, at the, we'll wait until things have calmed down a little bit, at least first with lockdown here. Uh, Chris, are you to blame for me liking that PP version first? Chris is the king of enablers, Barry. If it wasn't for his videos, I wouldn't be here. So blame him. Yeah, I would agree with that. Jon Snow said it. Right. There we go. Okay, bud, send me your Addy on Instagram. Right. Will do, mate. Thanks, Barry. Alexandria's Godfather is a superb take on Barry Onda. Well, look, I think what I'll do then, let's say this. If Barry can send me uh, that couple of meal decant, that would be great. And based on that, if I like the fragrance, I will, because of the price, I would say probably the Alexandria version is much more accessible to me or the perfume part. I'll go and get that first and we'll see. We'll see what I think of Barry Onda. He would, we would all send you some Heather Blaine Boris. Yeah. I'd appreciate it greatly. Well, Heather, let's see what we can do. The perfume part of the one is also great. Yeah, that's what started Barry's interpretation with it. So, right, let me go back to Marcus's kind donation to me with the Parfums de Mali fragrance samples I received. What would you recommend I try first from there? What would you recommend I review? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yes, I can count. I've got eight samples there. I've also got, what else have I got? I've got Herod and I've got Leighton and I've got Percival as samples as well that aren't in there. There we go. Look, that's a good idea. Just quickly, Barry, uh, John's got Tony. I'll donate a couple of quid for the post. Let's get Heather some. Um, that's a really, really good idea. Is everybody happy to send a couple of quid into a pot? I'm not sure how we do this. 
so we can get Heather sent some purple gourmand. If we're going to do that, I suspect that it's going to be better for me to probably order a bottle from Matt and then I will ship it on from there. But I am quite happy to, I'm quite happy to go along with that. Let's see what we can do. Herod is my favourite. Right, Barry's going to donate too. Let's get this done. So anybody in this room, if you could contact me on Instagram to say happy to donate to send Heather some purple gourmand, then we'll get it done. Yeah, that's very true, Matt. We need to find a way. We need to find a way. Let's see if we can get it done. I'm not sure, John, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure how... If we lie and it gets destroyed, it's just a chance we all lose our money. I think it's just a chance we're going to have to take. So let's start this off with a donation. I'm happy. I'm going to put £20 towards it. How is that? So I will start with a £20 donation to send Heather the fragrance. And then we'll see what we go from there. You got a new comment from Den, New Den Lions. Oh, New Den Lions, just getting involved in framing, looking at some clone houses. What everyone's thought on PP and KD, KD Jane Spide. Right, I'm not going to lie, New Den Lions. PP got me into it, but there is a couple of houses that everyone know that I support in, and one of them's in this room. I would, I've not tried anything from KDJ, so I can't comment on that. But anything from Perfume Parlor, they're not open at the moment, though. Or you could try Pocket Scents, and they do some inspired buys. Or you can try Rosa Salas, if you're in the UK here, which I suspect you are from your Millwall name. Not tried Precious Pearls either. So there you go. There's three houses, Perfume Parlor, Pocket Scents, or Rosa Salas. There you go. My dog is barking at my door, so the wife is going to let him back in because he's driving us mad. He wants to come back in and say hello. Right, so back to the Parfums de Mali. Um, someone has said that I try Sedley first. I review that. Now, I'm not going to spray that here because I've literally got probably about a meal to two meal, probably only one wearing. I have sprayed it on my hand, and I can tell you it is bloody gorgeous. It is really fresh, and I think I like it more than Dali. I would love both of those in my fragrance. I said I want some more freshies. I would recommend the PDM underscore UK for UK, and I will try... I think one of my first ones I will own, I wanted to try Carlisle, which I'm really, really interested to try. I love Herod. I love Percival, which is a fresh in a signature fragrance. And I also love uh, Leighton. And Leighton would be a great first buy from Parfums de Mali. Now, I am going to end up at some point hopefully in fairly new, near future, with a Parfums de Mali. And I'm not going to be able to afford to go and buy them all, maybe just the one. And I want to get it right. I want to order the one that I love the most, that I will cherish in my collection. So I am going to go through these samples on channel and see what I like the most. I'm going to ask my wife what she likes the most from them at the moment. Have you tried Leighton yet? I don't know. You don't know, right. So I'm gonna, right. If the first three comments about what they want you to try, again, let me just run through what I've got in front of me. I'm not going back out to the garage again. I've got Dali, I've got Sedley, I've got Habdan, I've got Callan, 
I've got Carlisle, I've got Galloway, I've got Leighton Exclusive, and I've got Nissian. What the first three comments are from now on the screen are the three that I'm going to get Becca to try now. So first three comments of the ones I've just mentioned, what should we get Becca to smell? And we'll get her reaction of what she thinks. Callan, right. So there's the first one. Callan, Carlisle and Habdan were the first three. I've not tried Habdan. I've not tried Carlisle, even though I've had this for about a week. I've not tried Callan, I believe. I know Callan's the one in the red bottle. It's probably going to be the easiest of these three. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to tear a bit of paper quickly and we'll get Becca's reaction on paper as to what her favourite is. I don't think she's happy to come on the live. Are you or not? Are you happy to come in? Uh, come on. No. Right, she's not happy to come in, people. Sorry. But, right, let's try Callan, first of all. Here we go. Ooh. Blimey. That is much different to what I was expecting. I've heard that this is very designer. That is good. Let me just give you one another quick fresh spray. The opening is very good, very fresh, very nice, very likable. Let's give Beck a that. What's one. this? This is called Callan, is the first one we're doing. Yeah. Hold on a moment. Well, I think Jackson, our dog, has just popped at the same time that she's smelt that. <laughs> he just let one go. <laughs> Unless that was Becca, but I don't think it was. <laughs> what do we think? Mm. No, there's something. There's something I don't like about it. There's something in there. Right, yeah, I agree. There is something in there. The opening is lovely. But there is just it's something lurking, something bitter in the background. And that is, I don't know, Chris, I, I don't know if anyone's got the notes or can get the notes for you, but has Callan got any oud in the background? Because there is something slightly animatic anim about it, in the just lurking in the background. The opening doesn't match what's in what lurks in the background. It has a green earthiness. Yeah, definitely. So it's earthy. Right, take that horrible note out, and that'd be really nice. Yeah, so there's something in there that's not quite right for you. No. So it's going to be important to me if I'm going to spend the sort of money that it is on. It's going to be really important to me to get this right. I want Becca to like it too. I know I should wear it for me, but it's a bit that Becca lives with me. Sorry, mm -hmm. Do you know when you taste a really sour gobstopper and you put it in and the first bit makes you go, and then as soon as you take that sour layer off, yeah. it's actually pretty decent. Okay, there we go. But there's just no, it's no. Centralised, it's like Gaia without the honey. Yeah, see, I've tried Gaia and that wasn't for me. There was something in there that didn't agree with me and maybe that was the same thing from this. But the opening, that is... Yes. I do agree with Marcus. Almost exactly the same notes as BR540. But it's that one note. See, I'm not getting that, that note in there out. now. So, sniff it for a long time. That horrible note seems to disappear and it is quite sweet, but then you've got that horrible punch in your face. So there's a moss note in the background. There, thank you, Chris. So that is what we're getting from it. It's the moss yeah. In the background. Now, you don't like a lot of traditional scents, and they have oak moss in. So, well, it's not traditional. This is quite modern, I would say. Mm. Now, I really like it. I love the bottle. The red bottle is gorgeous. 
But that is really nice. Thank you, Chris, for your input in that. So that is Calam. Let's get her next reaction. See if we can get her to, if any any of these that she likes. We're going to go next with Habdan and see what she thinks of that. Right, there's a good amount on there. Now that is completely different to Callan, obviously as you expect it to be. Very, very light and airy. So this is Habdam we're talking about now. Quite citrusy. Trying to pick out some of the folks. Doing this blind is quite difficult. It's nice, I really like it. It's a little bit... Habdan, is there any oak moss in this? Musky, citrusy. I'm trying to think of what the middle notes might be because it's quite well-rounded. I would imagine this is quite linear. I don't think this is going to change much. I don't dislike it when you do. What? No, my nose sometimes when I pick out. Oh, yeah, there we go. Sorry. The fruit in Habdan is apple. Thanks, Marcus. Oh, I don't know. is apple, rose and myrrh. But it's still quite light. This isn't resinous at all. This is uh, quite light and airy. There you go, Bex, give that a go. <laughs> I'd love you to get a reaction on camera. I really would. <laughs> she is hilarious. Do you know what that reminds me of? Absolutely hilarious. That reminds me of my dad in the 90s. Yeah, so it's quite an old school fragrance. With a mix of his garage. <laughs> like at work. Oh. It's like that metallic tyre sort of industrial smell. I think Becca should be doing this instead of me. She's got a great nose, by the way. Um, she don't like that one. Her reaction when she smelled it, I'd love to have got that on camera. You know she sort of almost, she almost sort of. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. It was. She she looked. If you could rate her on a scale of sexiness at that moment that she did that from one to ten, it would ten. be a ten. <laughs> <laughs> it does though. It reminds me of walking into my dad's place of work back in the day when I was a toddler, and you've got the mix of. Metallic rubber, sort of newish, sort of industrial smell with a hint of dettol. Yeah, so it, antibacterial. I, I said that it's clean and fresh. It is definitely that. It's clean and fresh, but it might be a little old school for Becca's taste. I like it. Whether I'd own it or not, I'm not sure. It's not my favourite that I've tried so far. So that is going to be moving down the pile a little bit. I prefer Calam to that, I must say. Right, on to the last one. We are going to go with... No, we're actually going to do two more because someone's requested that we do Sedley. Let's just do all of them. So we're going to move on to Carlisle next. Ooh. Oh, no, I have Marcus's sales here. Okay, should I lie? I will lie. <laughs> <laughs> you can't lie, you're not allowed to lie, I've said that. <laughs> no, I think uh, everyone's got different tastes, so uh, you'll buy what you like. This is our taste, and we are quite simple when it comes to fragrances, I'm afraid. Now that is, um, Carlisle was a little bit more deeper and darker and challenging than the others, I am going to predict that Becca won't like this, but I think it is very nice. It is fruity. It's a little bit woody. I've seen some reports on this, so I do know some of the notes, but 
that probably makes it a little bit easier to get away with. There's something a little bit floral in there, but there's something challenging as well that I think Becca won't like. I really like it. Whether I will like it as much as, say, Leighton, I'm not sure yet. I'd have to wear it on skin, I think, first. I'm looking forward to... Do you not want to come over here and give us your reaction? Oh, no. <sighs> right, Becca's going to... Let's see what she thinks. Oh, that smells like camels. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I don't know if you heard that, it smells like camels. Do you know what it reminds me of? Oh, God, right, what? When we were in Egypt, yeah. it reminds me of when you walk past the camel shelter with a hint of sweaty Egyptian man. Oh, God. Oh. But to some people, it might be beautiful. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Marcus. <laughs> no, it... <laughs> Cross between Ojan and Herod. Yeah, there is some sweetness in there. Can you not agree with that? There is a little bit of sweetness somewhere in there. Hang on. <laughs> She's got the... Oh, it smells like dates. You like dates? Like spiced yeah, that's dates, better. which yeah, is yeah. nice. So you probably need to let it settle a little bit. Would I want to smell like a sweaty camel date, man? No. No, it's just not for me. Chris has put, you've got the hump with Carlisle. Way. Yeah, no, there is a sweetness to it. There's a spiciness to it. I am a super smeller, Heather. That I should be a super smeller. It's a it's a bit more resinous than the Kalan or Habdan to me. Do you know what it reminds and me? It, it reminds me of those Turkish Egyptian y sort of desserts. Yeah, there we go. So Becca's put <laughs> A Eastern dessert. Eastern, yeah. Eastern dessert. And uh, Marcus isn't going to be hiring you for his marketing <laughs> of his PDMs anytime soon. You're probably wise, Marcus. <laughs> Smells like sweaty camel. <laughs> I don't think sweaty camel will, will sell it. <laughs> it's very Arabic. Arabian smell. Yeah, it's slightly that, yeah. But I... I like it better than the other two I've tried. I'm going to put that above Kalan and above Habdan just because... Now, I, as you know, don't like anything that challenging, but that, that's, that's good. To me, it's good, but Becca's got to like it too if I'm going to pay all the money on it. If she'll allow me to buy it, she's got to like it. Right. <laughs> I don't think I've ever smelled camel before. I've never smelled a camel up front. I must say, I've not never gone up to a camel and gone, let me sniff you or let me sniff you. <laughs> no, you can't. It'll give you the um. Hold on. No, don't like it. Right. Let's uh, move on. We're going to do... I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to use a tiny bit of the juice that we've got. I'm going to do one spray because I still want to review this. And this is Sedley. So I'm going to get Becca to smell this, but I'm going to get her to smell it from my hand because I don't want to waste it on paper because I've not got much left. So let me get this on hand. One good spray there. There's still plenty left from my review. And we're going to get okay. Becca to smell this one. Oh, yeah, that's good. Citrusy, very citrusy. Very lemon and lime. Very lemon and lime, there we go. I think that's more of a commercial scent though. Yeah, it's quite commercial. Very wearable though, isn't it? Yeah. This is signature scent worthy. To me, it would work better in the spring and summer, but you could, I think I said, I've not reviewed this, but this is a little bit zestier than Dali. Okay. Yeah, that's not good. That is nice. Now, do I like it more than Carlisle? There is less going on, much less going on in this than in Carlisle. But in terms of a more pleasing fragrance for people to smell around you, this is... Really, really good. Really good. 
Love it. I absolutely love Sedley. There you go. You got it live on camera. Bex approved. Oh, in the name, Bex approved 100%. That is good. So that is Sedley. So that is predicted approved. My, someone's who's seen that, BS detectors, but my great granddad was Egyptian and sold dates and fruit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not attracted to an Italian one. <laughs> there we go. Oh, right, Becca wants me to try the others. She wants to know which one we're going to buy. Becca already been squirted on. Have they? Mm. Right, they've been squirted on. Right, I need some more paper, excuse me. Right. So we are going to do. I've reviewed this, but I'm going to get Becca's take on it again. We're going to do Dali. Next, I've reviewed this. If you've not seen my review, look it up. You'll know that I like this already. Don't want to sway Becca. This is a tiny bit more, this is more barbershoppy, but it's very fresh. Becca doesn't, doesn't really like Fougères a great deal, but think her reaction was yes she really likes it don't think she'll like it as much as Sedley but let's get her reaction so this is Dali no I prefer that one you prefer that one yeah so you prefer me to own that one over Sedley this has got more of a um that's really good by the way it's gone a little bit creamy already it's lovely it smells quite similar to well, I say similar. Jean Paul. Yeah, yeah. The, Becca pointed this out the first time I sprayed it to her without even looking at the notes or reviews or anything on it. When I very first sprayed this, she pointed out immediately that it smells a little bit like Jean Paul Gaultier. And it does. It's got very similar notes, hasn't it? Yeah, it's minus the vanilla. I prefer that one. You prefer that one? That one is nice and fresh. Yep. Let me smell it again. Might be buying two. That now reminds me of a new car. Do you know when the valeters ballot in the new cars at work? Yep. You go to the door and you think, ah, oh, it's fresh. Yeah. But do I want to smell like a new car? But there is this, it's got a, a hidden manly scent in the background. So it's quite masculine. That's fresh, don't get me wrong, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Would you wear that? No. No, okay. But that, yeah, definitely. That's number one. So I'm just going to catch up with some of the comments and we'll move on. So Becca, number one is Dali. And that is, it's got some similarities to Jean-Paul Gaultier Le Mau. It's much better quality. Do you agree with that? Oh, it's a lot smoother and a lot creamier, yeah, 100%. Yeah. It's much better quality, and it, from what I've, I've worn this, and it lasted for quite a long time on my skin as well. I got five hours plus from it. Yeah. So that is Becca's favourite so far. 100% that one. There we go. Right, now on to the next one. We are, we've nearly done with these. We've got a couple more to do. So we've done Carlisle, we've done Sedley, we've done Callan, we've done Habdan, and we've done Dali. And so far, Dali is her favourite. Right, next, we're going to move on to Nissian. Now, Nissian is something I'm really been excited to try. You don't hear an awful lot about it, but I really am keen to try something new from Parfums de Mali and see what my thoughts are. No, oh, oh no, <laughs> don't let Becca smell it. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be challenging. <laughs> right. Now, that's quite green. Again, quite earthy. <laughs> I'm looking forward to her reaction. Come into camera. <laughs> oh, no, that reminds me. Oh, here we go. Of she don't mind it. My dad. Mind me of my and dad. And that's a happy smell. That's a happy smell because it reminds me of my dad. 
My dad, I don't know what he used to wear back in like the 90s when we were growing up, but it was in a bottle with a black lid. I think I've told you before. Yep. Dad sent me, sent me the picture of it. So that reminds me of my dad going out, partying for like a family do. Whether I want you to smell like it, no, because that's just weird. <laughs> there we go. But that is a very old school man smell. There we go. So that's not that bad. No, that's. I hope you can all hear Becca okay. Can so obviously Marcus just put thank you Becca's dad, so you probably can hear. Can someone else just give me a thumbs up if you can hear Becca's voice okay? Because we're doing this from my laptop that's very old. I know that's why the screen quality isn't great because it's just a built-in webcam. Shall I see if I can find? What my dad, because he sent me a picture not so long ago. And we're going to find out what Becca's sent, and she slightly sound fine, they can hear you. So we're just going to see what... Uh, oh, no. No, she's got rid of it, we, we can't remember. Then can I have another smell? Mm, yeah. So it's Becca approved. <laughs> As if that means anything. It's very, this is very green to me. Very earthy. I'm surprised Becca likes this because it's a little bit more challenging and it's not as sweet as the others, but obviously she's got that scent memory of her dad smelling like something similar. So do you think your dad would like this? My dad would like it. Would yeah. it make an amazing Christmas present or birthday present for him? Yeah, and it'll probably get my mum a little bit excited, which is very strange and weird. Oh, that's a bit weird. To, that is really that's strange. Really weird. <laughs> Can you take that back? I'll take that's, it back. That's just, I'll take it back. Yeah, she's taken that back. <laughs> right, so that is Miss Liam, and I quite liked it. It's not my favourite. Uh, it's one of my least favourites, I must say. But Becca approved because of the scent memory. Right, we're moving on to a couple more. My dog's just let one go again because I can smell oh. it. Right, so we're going to do Galloway. Now, this is a little bit more well-known than this am in the fragrance community. And I have not smelt this yet either, so this is new on camera to me too. I've got a good decant of that, so I'll be able to wear that a few times. I've just had the scent fly past my nose. That... Again, very fresh, a little green. I keep blaming the dog. It was the dog, it wasn't me. Let's get your reaction to that. So this is Galloway. So this is fresh, light, airy, little green. Quite, it's got a bit of sweetness there as well. And Dad. A bit of citrus in there as well, but something quite tart. It's not a sweet citrus. You've got something very similar to that, which is off the shelf. And Becca's saying I've got something similar to it that's off the shelf. Mm, you have. And Chris has put on this one, think warm paper fresh out of the photocopier. Give that a smell again and see if we get that same association. Mm. Unless a man's rubbed himself all over it. Don't tell him. It doesn't sound like how folk up here at work. <laughs> so it's, um, Becca's saying it's a little bit more masculine than that, Chris, I think. I wouldn't pay, I wouldn't pay whatever price that is because I'm sure there is one in your collection which is quite generic off the shelf that you can get for probably half the price. I wouldn't say there's anything unique about that. No, I mean, I've, I think I've got um, one from Marks and Spencers that smells a little like it. It smells quite fresh like that, like the green grass cuttings that I mentioned. I don't get any green grass. No. Let me have a little spray again. I think that... Just me give... then, Chris has put just in. <laughs> <laughs> that would give me a bit of a headache. Do you know why, like, the boys go overboard with their lint Africa sometimes? <laughs> and you think... Yeah. Or you walk past the Lush shop and you're like, God, I can't work in there, that could be a day. Can I have another smell? Because I've that, just got the opening. If we were to go on a date, if we were spending a lot of time together, that would give me a headache. It's quite nauseating after a while. Okay. It's quite heady. People are saying it's similar to Lalique. 
we haven't got um, like the leap pour on or anything like that. But see, that's I quite like this. And yeah, Chris, uh, if you refer back to my list, I don't expect you to do that, but on my list, I have Lalique White as one of my cheap or clone fragrances that I'd like in my collection. And if it smells anything like that, I would like to own it. And I do get the paper association, but I am smelling it on paper, so that probably doesn't help. It's quite heavy. See, I'm not finding it heady at all. I mean, you could overspray this quite easily and it could go the other way. But I think if you just did a light spray of it and just get the faintness of it, because it's not a heavy scent, I would say. It's not resinous. Yeah, but I find Zara one heady. The rich warm addictive? Yeah, that's too much for me. My son is up and also so is his music. <laughs> We, we've we got two older boys and we are really lucky that they don't tend to play a lot of music, do they? They're too busy on their gaming consoles. That I like. It's, it's not my favourite, but it's not my least favourite. I prefer it than Nissan, for example. I imagine when you get hot and sweaty, mm -hmm. that would get too... Yeah, and see, I think that could work all year round. I'm trying to... I'm trying to think of when it would work. And Chris has put their good balance of citrus and woods. Yeah, it's um, signature worthy because it's not too resinous. It's, I would imagine that would really last on skin as well. Has anyone got any experience of that, of how long that you'd get from this? Because I would imagine that that would stick to your skin and stay with you for quite some time. I really like it. Right. Oh, look, he's 18. Is he 18 today? Did you say? If he is, happy birthday. Bright with warmth. Yeah, Chris, it's not my favourite, but I can see if you've got a certain style that you like, then this would be, in terms of quality as well, quality is extremely good, I would say. Really, really good. It would last. I would recommend it to people. It's not necessarily my favorite, but I like it. Right, lastly, now I do have others, but again, I'm not gonna go and get them and the stream's moving on a bit. We're gonna do Leighton Exclusive. Now, I've tried Perfume Pa's interpretation of this, and I don't like it as much as Leighton. But that is from the clone version, not tried the real thing. So let's give this a go. Oh, see, it's got straight away the latent DNA. <laughs> oh. I really like it. That is really good. And yeah, Chris, you're right. The real thing is better. The perfume part of the clone I've got, I've got one of the 13 mil spray bottles of this one. And there's something in there that's very medicinal that plays about. And Leighton with a bit of skank, which suggests that Becca wouldn't like it. But I, oh, that's good. That is really, really good. Oh, that is up there with to me, Carlisle, better. Nice. Let's get Becca's reaction, see what she says. Uh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> This isn't good, people. Do you know what I want to know? Go on. Is, do they have any females that make these fragrances alongside these? Because, I mean, the notes, the hidden notes behind that kind of 
skanky sort of poof, smack them in the face. They're actually really nice. Yeah. It's that smell where you think, oh, is that going to be off? <laughs> if I was to pick that off the shelf and go, oh, no, I think that's going to be off, I'd throw it in the bin. Is it better than camel, though? Is it better than camel? Right. I'm going to do one more thing here. Matt, this is really bordering dodgy territory. We're going to spray Matt's interpretation of it now. Oh, is that the same one? So this is not the same one, no. So they do two bottles. They do Leighton and they do Leighton Exclusive. Leighton Exclusive will have a bit more feel thin, a little bit more challenging notes. It pushes the DNA a little bit more and adds something to it. So let's spray Matt's interpretation of Leighton, which is the same, and see if she gets... Now, to me, this is what's in the background of Leighton Exclusive. Your turn, Matt. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Brilliant. Are they meant to smell the same? No, there will oh. be some of the DNA in that will be in that, in terms of what some you know of that smells like. Go on. It smells like what I clean my kitchen for. Oh. It smells a little bit like, um, is it the pine toilet block? Oh. That's a good thing, that does smell bad. Pine toilet block. <laughs> Sorry, Matthew. Okay. Uh, is this a lot more citrusy? What one? This one. Matt's one. Matt's one. Right, okay. Right, we're sure, lad. My interpretation of it is that I don't get that pine. It was very pine. It smells like Christmas trees. Toilet block. It's quite woody. It is a woody fragrance anyway. No, it definitely smells like my bleach for the toilet. That's not a bad thing. Matthew. Matthew, you're a very intelligent person. Oh, oh dear. Matt, I'm so sorry. Right, in this one, a skanky sort of in your face. It's so a latent exclusive, yeah. Has died down. Right, so are you starting to like it or do you still not like it? You wouldn't want me to smell it a bit all the time. It couldn't be my signature scent? No. No? I think it's a bit too sophisticated for you, though. <laughs> Did you hear that? Oh, Matt, see, it's not you just getting pelters. It's a bit too sophisticated for me, apparently. That is lovely, isn't it? See? Barry, my wife either gets cleaning product, dentist, doctors, hospital, or church smell, and everything. See? PDM is probably one of the most successful niece houses, but you wouldn't think so listening to this. Oh. No, you wouldn't, Matt. And I agree. Dettol is too sophisticated for me, Matt's just said. Let me try the Harpic. The Harpic is, is the Harpic better quality. Look, this isn't a reflection on the quality or the houses or back out of it brands. Now. This is just my nose and this is why I'm not on your videos. Though. Right, I'll tell you what we're going to do. This will be entertaining. Right. Marcus. Oh God. How much are you currently selling Leighton Exclusive for on your page? Would you mind answering that for me? This is... 145. 145, right, there we go. I am now going to spray the other fragrance, one of the other fragrances that you kindly sent to me. And we are going to spray our math, our math Matthew's just tag. Like, I think we answered the question, is negative reviews okay? <laughs> Going back to our negative reviews okay? No. Going by this, I said no. Becca clearly thinks they are, right. So let's spray. Right, so I've sprayed this. This is a clone of Blur de Chanel. 
And uh, yeah, you can stick to your photographs, love. I'll do the reviewing, all right? There we go. You can have, give that a smell and see if that's, you like that more than any of the Parfums de Mali that you've tried so far. No. You don't like it more? No. You like it less? Don't try and say I'm a basic bitch. I was going to get go down a route that she's a basic bitch, but... No, 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 no. What's the one I like in right. that little one? Right, you liked Dali the most, I think. Dali, am I right? I think so. Do you like it, though? No. You said you did on me the other it day. Is, it's all right. But you just asked me the question whether I like it compared to those. No, okay. no. You... This is cheap. Right, okay, so at least you we've got that. You can smell it's cheap. You can smell it's like using cheap stuff. Right, we're going to spray their one million clone as well. Thank you again, Marcus. Right, here we go. Now, Becca absolutely loves one million. On a man. Loves it on a man. She thinks it's sexy. Sorry to use the word. Oh, I do see? cringe sometimes. Look, Barry's helping me out. Barry's digging me out of this massive hellhole. Go on, then. <laughs> Barry said, it's better to hear from people that haven't got a nose for fragrance. Hold on, let me stop you there. What? Who says I've got a nose for fragrance? <laughs> <laughs> That's subjective. <laughs> Us in the community so so black. Yes, and I always think, Barry, and everybody else, that sometimes you men need a, I say basic, because we're not, we, have, we, we don't put our noses on loads of but some basic women's yes or no's to give you that oh well okay yes i appreciate what's in the fragrance and i appreciate it cost x amount of money and you've used amazing things but does it a hundred percent boil down to it? is it attractive to females and half of those if i was to smell on you yeah i wouldn't find it necessarily sexually attractive and that's not saying that what's in the bottles is awful or shouldn't be made because yes 100 percent you should be made i appreciate the quality and i appreciate what goes into the fragrances but if you're asking for a women's opinion of what works and what doesn't work on a man fortunately sometimes boils down to the basic smells a bit like why jeremy fragrance tests all these commercial off-the-shelf sort of fragrances on females in the high street he does indeed. He doesn't have his Parfum Tamari collection and say, do you like this? Because, of course, most women who are walking down the street who go to the Dior Sauvages and the One Millions aren't going to stand there and say, oh my God, you smell so amazing. Because half the time, women don't necessarily like what you fragrance people do 100% appreciate. There we go. I hope you heard all that quite clearly. Bex raises a very valid point, I think. There is one slight, slight clink in our argument, only slight, and that is not everybody wears fragrance for the opposite sex, they wear it for themselves. So John, for example, lives at home on his own. He is going down the rabbit hole of more, less commercial fragrances now. And he liked commercial fragrances, but he's starting to like things certainly a little bit more challenging than I probably like. And he sprays them for himself, so he's got to like it. So those fragrances have a market. But it all depends on the marketing of what the company wants their fragrance to smell like and who they want to sell it to, I think. It's like her argument. It's like your video, was it last week, mm -hmm. that said about... Um, the whole gender neutral fragrances. I made a point after the video and said to you, it boils down to what makes the most money. Yep. And a lot, 90, 85 to 90% of the population mm -hmm. get influenced by advertising, by generic sort of smells, because it's easy pleasing. Not many people put themselves out there to be different. And I think that's where we've kind of cloned all of our scents and noses to say what is nice and what isn't nice. 
And I think it's hard to get out of that box and to get women to smell different things on a man. And that's not a bad thing. I'm not saying this is just my opinion. But I think people like Jeremy Fragrance markets his own fragrance with four men. Yep. So he knows what makes money and what doesn't make money. That's all I'm saying. There we go. Right, so let's catch up on some of the comments. It's subjective, I suppose, uh, to grab a guy and spray him with DNG the one. I have an idea for a video when close down is complete. Take a higher niche and a best selling designer onto the high street. It's all down to what you then ask 10 men and 10 women what they want and what will they wear and what they want their partner to wear. Yeah, it's a great idea. We've said about doing that, haven't we? Me and Becca, we don't mind getting the idea out there. Uh, if I ever go and visit Chris, maybe we could do this. Um, we have got an idea here, Chris, that we would like to take some female fragrances, some that are a little bit more female, sort of female marketed fragrances, so we say. And we could take something like Delina from Parfums de Mali onto the marketplace and then take the more commercially aware, like Dior Joy, onto the marketplace. And we go out into the high street and we ask men what they would prefer their lady to smell of. Now, that may have been done before by some of the female reviewers, but I don't think it's been done by a male asking other men what they prefer their lady to smell of. And that is the idea that me and Becca had that we would like to do. And that is maybe something me and Chris could do together at some point. That is an idea for a video. There we go. I love is that? that is one million or our Marv's clone of one million. Yeah. See, Becca really likes that. And would you say you prefer that to all of those? Because she's just gone, hmm. No. You still don't prefer it no. because of the quality. Yeah, the quality, 100%. And I think it, it's crowd pleasing, obviously. But would I rather you smell like a young teeny bopper who's oversprayed it to get some of the opposite sex, or would I prefer you to smell like the one I like? I prefer you to smell like the one I like. Okay, just going to catch up on some of the comments. So, um, obviously, we've read Barry's idea. Matt put in between that, it's all down to what you buy it for. Plenty of guys in the community wear a frag just to read a book or go on a journey. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Bang on there. Uh, I do agree with that. Um, or avoid men with them darker scents forever after. Great idea, Tony. And Barry's quite funnily put that John will post a tag out for that video tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> right, Curly Scents did it with two guy friends about top ladies' friends and thought they were mostly too sweet and uninspiring. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I think I've seen it, Matt. I, I think I've seen those type of videos, but my idea would be to do it uh, from a gentleman's point of view with another gent. So let's say we meet up and we go to the pub and I bring a load of female fragrances with me, which is um, not unknown because, you know, I'm a bit of a girl. And we say, what would you prefer to smell blindly? Then... That's the idea is we go out onto the high street and we ask people blindly what they prefer and see if they prefer the more expensive niche fragrances or the more high street lead stuff. That is the idea for the video. Well, Mrs. Tony is my ideas factory man. <laughs> and she's going to start charging. We right, well, numbers have gone down a little bit. We're down to 15. We've done an hour and 30 minutes so far. So we're going to be on, let's say we'll, we'll stay for another, we'll go up to one hour and 45 minutes. So we're going to leave in about 10 minutes. Is that all right? I hope that's okay with everybody. Believe, I don't want it to clash. Maya's got a live at three o'clock and it's not fair that we clash with hers. So uh, people can get along to that if they want to. Um, if, any, if no one knows, Maya did come in the room earlier. I've just reread some of the comments. So thanks again, Maya, for joining. Maya's doing a Zoom chat with somebody from Instagram, I believe. 
and it'd be well worth you going along to her Instagram page. And I think she's left the, I think she's left the link in her bio to join her live chat. So I might pop along at some point. We've got to get food and we've got to get a few things sorted around here, but I may join at some point. She's doing it from three till five, I believe. Michael Mo, fine. Need to follow up on my 98 likes on Tinder. <laughs> Hilarious. 98. So if Chad asked you the question, Michael Mo Trip, on um, how sexy do you rate yourself, how sexy would you rate yourself from zero to 100? There we go. Right, what else have we got? I would like to add niche and indie on readily available mass production designer is yeah you're right there heavy you can't go into boots and buy a niche fragrance there are some places on the high street where you could go in and pick say maybe i've seen at the perfume shop they do some of the uh, tom ford uh, private blends if people would class that as niche or not who knows but and you go into john lewis as well and you can buy maison margella or you can buy creed fragrances so there are some places on the high street where you can pick these out but it's not as readily available as some designers so you yeah you are right there the sentiment man which is right i think i'd watch that video but don't tell them if it's designer or niche completely blind yeah that's the idea so um the idea is that we would do it completely blind so no one knows what they're smelling. Baller. Uh, uh, people buy what's readily available to smell in the stores. They do indeed. My friend, we should all say 10 because it means you appreciate yourself and beautiful i pull more girls with humor than with looks I'm saying brains, humor well. of course. right last subject before we go michael's just give me an idea <laughs> you see a lot of this uh, on videos i've not done one yet fragrance spray routine i am going to give you mine and I'm going to give Michael a rather um, cringy tip. And I heard this from someone outside of the fragrance game when I was about 16, 17, I believe. So let's do, and it's not ball spraying, Matt, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Spray your balls. <laughs> Uh, right, so I'm going to go with my normal spray routine. I've not got my scent of the day on. I've only sprayed my hand there. And we're going to go today, we are going to wear... We're going to wear the original panty dropper, Issy Miyake. <laughs> and we're going to go through my spray routine and how many times I spray me go back from the camera a little bit and where I spray. Right, so this is what I would do with my spray routine. I would start neck up front. So I would go here and here. I would then spray my arm and I always do a little tiny rub. I would then spray maybe once or twice on clothes, depending on how strong the fragrance is. If it's too strong, that may be enough. This will fade over time. It lasts okay on my skin, but just so you've got a little bit more projection, a little bit more longevity, I would spray, which I wouldn't recommend this for all fragrances because some do stain, but I've got a black jumper on, it's perfectly fine. I would then spray once, on or twice on my jumper right the last thing i do i'm a, sorry the second to last thing i do so i would then i'm not going to spray it on my hand but i'm gonna because i've got something there but i would spray it on my hand and i think that is a fraghead thing to do 
because during the day, I like to gauge the longevity of the fragrance I'm wearing. So if I'm reviewing, I have a good idea of whether it's there on my skin or not still. So I would always spray once on the back of my hand too. If I was going out clubbing, trying to pull girls, you think of that environment that you're in if you're going to a club. It is really loud. You can't hear what anyone says to you. And I'm sure you've all been in this situation before, apart from John. And you are talking to a girl, let's say, and they can't hear you. You can't hear them. What is the thing that you do to get in close and talk? You then will go in near somewhere the ears to talk. So the last thing I like to do is spray onto my hand and I like to rub a little bit behind my ears and even a little bit on the cheek there just to get rid of the rest of the residue off my hand. So that is my spray routine. We go spray, 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 rub, spray on top and spray on the back of hand, spray on the hand and put a little bit behind my ears. Someone comes in to talk to you, they're gonna smell it behind your ears. That is where their nose is gonna be and they will smell you. That on the back of the ears is a fragrance tip I learned when I was very young and my wife will probably take the mick and say you've never pulled a girl in your life. Oh my god, I've just wrote He talks as if he's had loads of problems. Oh my god. <laughs> this is why I didn't want to do it with her ear, you see, because she'll just take the mick out of me. But trust me, Michael, it sounds like you're a young man. Give it a go when you're out clubbing next, when we're all out of lockdown and you're out and you're on the pool. Get some behind your ears. There you go. Barry says he uses the struggle model. <laughs> Struggle cover, is that right? What is that? <laughs> Back of the neck too, there we go. Yeah, that little leaf. I've heard I've heard other things like on your elbows, on the inside of your elbows, on your pulse points. So back of your knees, I've heard. I think that was Jeremy Fragrance that said that. So if you're walking off, you get it, you get the scent trail leaving behind you. I've heard that, but you can overspray, and I wouldn't recommend that. I wouldn't recommend overspraying to anybody. But I smell bloody gorgeous now because I've now got on my favourite is in the oven. Ankles in the oven? Barry says ankles. Ankles in the office. So I suppose if you're walking, your feet are moving a lot. Oh, really? I've never heard that. Never heard that ever. Never. No. That's the first one on me. Men do apply differently heavy. You're right. That is my spray routine. I've always, always done that. The only thing I would say I've added in the last six months or so since I've been into this is on the back of the hand. That's the only thing I've added to my spray routine. So I've always done the normal and then... <laughs> Barry just likes them calls. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, thank you, but I only date women over 38. Not into girls' drama. Belly button is a tip as there is constant heat. Hey. Eh? Never heard any of this before. No, this is new. Some of this is new to me. Spray in your belly button. Never heard that. <laughs> ankle grabber. <laughs> <laughs> Barry's an ankle grabber. <laughs> Don't walk in near your bed anytime soon because you'll grab your ankles. <laughs> Behind the knees. I've never heard this. Behind the knees was a Jeremy Fragrance thing, I believe. Maybe Barry works in a shoe shop. Tony won't be allowed to club anymore. Barry, you never do anyway. I never do anyway. I like to be in my bed talking on live streams at 12 o'clock at midnight instead now. Barry, I'm never been with Barry Honda. <laughs> Brilliant. What a laugh. That's fantastic. Right, we've got to that time, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all so much for joining me. There's 10 of us left in the room. I'm so sorry, Marcus. Ma Becca apologises to Marcus. Marcus, thanks again for sending these out to me. I'm still going to give them a little review. Sorry, Matthew. And uh, she's also apologised to Matthew as well. I'm not sure if Matthew's here anymore.
But thanks so much to everybody for joining my live stream. Don't forget Maya's live stream at three o'clock. Lovely lady. Really, really, really excitable. And uh, I love watching her stuff. So really kind, lovely lady as well. Go and give her a watch. So great timing. Lamb is neither. I'm off, everybody. Take care of yourselves. Stay safe. Stay home. And I will see you all again soon. And we all had lots of fun. Thanks again. <laughs> and we're going to end this stream.